Good morning folks. Today is the first day of spring and <clears throat> I start my uh, garden seeds usually on the first day of spring and uh, I just wanted to share a couple things with you. Uh, there's a company called Virgin Seed Supply where you can buy um, heirloom vegetables, non-GMO uh, vegetable seeds and I've, so I got a pack of theirs uh, stuff and it's got all the common vegetables I need you can buy different packs of that but uh, this is really what I wanted to show you here this is a, a uh, it's called MycoGrow it's uh, Dr. Paul Stamets uh, puts this stuff out and it's a, a fungus that forms a symbiotic relationship with your uh, plant uh, your, and uh, and it really decreases the amount uh, of uh, fertilizer you need to give to your plants and you get a much healthier uh, plant if you inoculate your seeds with this stuff whenever you germinate them. So uh, anyway, so I just thought I'd show you that on the first day of spring. I'll be back. Alright, I'm back again. And what I've got here is three identical uh, separator papers all cut from the same piece of borax paper all coated with the same uh, coating on either side graphite and, tit and uh, water on graphite white glue and water on one side and titanium dioxide and, and uh, water and glue on the other side and uh, what I'm going to do with these is let them set different uh, lengths of time give them different drying times and, and test them <coughs> to make sure uh, um, well, just to see what happens with that, um, and I'll make sure that they're uh, rehydrated uh, equally whenever I run that test. So that's gearing up for more tests coming. Well, I got my magnesium sheet in the mail. I'm not sure if I showed that in the last update or not, but uh, it's a uh, four by six inches and one millimeter. Uh, thick, so it's it's pretty hefty piece of magnesium, and I'm going to cut it into four pieces. Uh, so that each uh, piece will be two inches by three inches, and uh, that'll be this my standard size for my for my uh, test in the test chamber with the zinc or magnesium. So we've got that ready to go. Alright, these are all my uh, manuals for the sensor equipment and data logging equipment. So I've got to uh, go through all these and uh, learn how to use this equipment and uh, do the settings and um, all that kind of stuff. So uh, I'll be working on that too. Okay, now I want to uh, review where we're at on our research and testing. Uh, as I said in the, in the last update, the uh, carbon felt uh, battery uh, has potential, but uh, it's going to take a lot longer to uh, develop something out of that. Whereas the thin film borax separator battery that we've got is almost ready to to test right now, and it has some some uh, great advantages to it. The battery is really easy to build. Uh, the thin film uh, separators are extremely easy. Now. Uh, another advantage of the thin film separator battery is we can use a wet gel process and potentially produce a solid state battery. We, and we, we've seen that uh, in the one video where we ran uh, 12 cycles on that and it, and it kept improving. As a matter of fact, the 12th uh, charge discharge of it was the strongest uh, cycle on that. So we don't even actually know how how uh, strong that battery will will get over time. Uh, eventually, it'll probably need the addition of water because we ran it for three and a half hours and uh, without adding any water to it, and it just got better. So that's real exciting right there. Now the dry cell, the dry gel process also uh, works well. It may not work quite as well as the as the wet gel, but uh, we don't know that for sure yet because uh, we had uh, water rehydration problems when we tested that. So, uh, but I'm going to be running those tests again 
with, with better hydration on it, and we'll, soon we'll see how much power it produces. Uh, but the advantage of, of letting the cell, the gel dry on that is it makes the battery extremely easy to clean. You know, uh, and nothing sticks to, to either side of that. You know, you just take the battery apart, sand off the oxidation on your plate, put it back together, and you're, you're right ready to go again for more cycles. So, uh, I, both of these are really good uh, advantages. And uh, last but not least, there, I thought we might have to put electrolytes in the battery to produce good power, but that doesn't appear to be the case either, because uh, we haven't used any electrolytes here in the last uh, week, and uh, we've got a, a over 100 milliamps from a less than two inch by two inch uh, battery size. So our peak was 128 around 10 milliamps per square centimeter and uh, as an example of what kind of power that already is producing and which this is a, a piece of the zinc uh, with its uh, galvanized steel plate that you can buy at uh, Home Depot cheap and this is the size that I'm going to use for to build my battery system with and uh, this is 10 by 12 inches inches which is uh, 620 square centimeters and if we multiply that times 10 milliamps per, per square centimeter we get 6.2 amps from one cell this size right here so uh, I mean, that's that's substantial power and we ought to be able to get three times that much pretty easy and still not use electrolytes so uh, I'm all in favor of producing a a self-charging battery that runs on water. I mean, that's my goal. If people want to add electrolytes to that, they, they can because the, this battery works with electrolytes too. But then you're going to dirty up your cell and have to clean your uh, your your plates more often. So, but and that's you know that's a, a individual choice as far as I'm concerned. So uh, anyway, that's where we are right there. We've got a little more testing to do on. Uh, the membrane and then we'll we'll start to, we'll put it in the chamber which will be done here pretty soon too uh, I've got some more pictures and stuff to show you on that next and then we'll be up be back for the wrap up this is a picture of the test chamber now with all the sensor equipment in it the uh, blue uh, box the inside there that's the oxygen sensor and uh, it's not a data logger, but uh, I can read the uh, the meter on it uh, easily through the glass. Uh, on the right-hand side of it, down in the well, is the carbon dioxide uh, sensor. And uh, I was planning on laying it flat in the bottom of the well, but uh, if I do that, it gets in the way of hooking up the other sensors. So uh, I st stood it up on its uh, edge and uh, it just fits underneath of the uh, the glass bowl so uh, so I actually have a couple of options right there on on that one um, the pH sensor which is the long horizontal tube there in the middle uh, that pivots and, and slides back and forth as I showed in the last uh, update but um, I don't think there's room to put another one in there uh, with that, but uh, I, one is uh, will actually uh, be okay because I can just fold up one end of the of the uh, separator paper, and uh, I can measure the bottom of it, or I can fold down one corner of it, then measure the uh, the upper uh, electrode side of it. So uh, that'll work out okay, and. Uh, Okay, here's a, another picture of the battery chamber from a different angle and on the left you can see the alligator clips for hooking up the uh, uh, to the electrodes and there's a 2 by 3 inch zinc uh, plate on the uh, battery mount which fits in there pretty nice. The uh, temperature sensors are tucked under the plate right now. I haven't sealed uh, around all the holes I drilled in the bottom uh, 
to, for, to mount everything. Uh, but I'm going to do that with uh, silicon caulk to make sure that it's airtight. But I also have to uh, put a air vent uh, through the bottom of it too. So we won't be able to uh, cycle uh, a cell in there 50 cycles or whatever because it, uh, it'll use up the oxygen. Once we know how much oxygen the cell is using, then uh, open a vent. I've been thinking about this data collection phase coming up and uh, specifically I've been thinking about how I can get the most mileage out of the data collection and by mileage I, I don't talk I'm not talking about money uh, the main purpose of this uh, channel is to promote self-charging technology and when the shit hits the fan this technology can keep you from getting uh, thrown all the way back to the stone age what we really need to grow and promote this technology is more experimenters doing self-charging research and making videos. This channel is growing, but it's not growing fast enough. And considering the potential of this technology, uh, it should be screaming up the charts. And the reason it's not is because I'm just one person trying to do everything by myself. Now, if we had ten people working at it, doing experiments and, and posting videos, we'd have ten times the exposure, you know, and if we shared the work collectively, we could make faster progress on the technology and we could share the, the increased exposure um, among the group and all the channels would grow faster. Alright, so let me ask you a question. Who can use this data the most? Well, it's obviously the people doing battery research, specifically people doing self-charging battery research. Okay, now let me ask you, who deserves this data the most? Well, that's obviously the people doing the battery research, specifically self-charging battery research, and, and out of their own pocket, I might add. And now let me ask you, is it fair to just put this information out there for everybody when I know there are people that come to the channel just to glean information that they'll use for their own selfish purposes? When I can use the, the data to, for a higher purpose uh, that's going to help everyone. So I've decided that I'm going to use the data for a greater purpose. And uh, I will share the uh, usual volts and amps readings for the self-charge and the discharge and some basic uh, information about the temperature changes and uh, pH changes and uh, atmospheric uh, changes that go on in the cell during the charge and discharge. To qualify for the data, all you got to do is be willing to cooperate and uh, make some videos. And uh, I hope uh, this video inspires some people to uh, get out there and do some uh, battery research. And uh, I thank you for watching.